Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Dyson V15 Detect. This new model from Dyson comes with several improvements over the V11, including three redesigned cleaner heads, which all have their own unique new features. The Detect part of the V15 name refers to a sensor the cleaner comes with, which senses when it's picking up dust and dynamically adjusts in auto mode as needed. The Dyson also counts the particles it's picking up and gives you real-time feedback of the size of the dirt it's picking up with a readout of the results on the vacuum's LCD screen. This feature works well and allows the machine to clean effectively while optimizing battery runtime. Today I'm going to show you the features on the machine, test out the new cleaner heads in a couple different ways, demonstrate the included attachments, and I'll also explain how to perform the regular Dyson recommended maintenance. This Dyson's easy to use, but it does have a ton of different control options, so let's take a look at how this works. It's very easy to operate. It just has a trigger right here that you hold down to power it. They finally adopted button switches on some of their models, especially in other countries, but we finally got one here that has that, the new OmniGlide. Most American Dysons, you just hold this trigger down to power it. The reason that you have to hold the trigger down is so that you get the best battery life out of it. You're only running it when you need to. And you have three different control options here. So there's a screen on the back and you can adjust it for eco mode. Let's take a look at the estimated battery life. About 71 minutes, medium or auto mode, 38 minutes, and then in boost mode, seven minutes. What I have found, let's throw it back on eco mode, with a powered tool hooked up, it runs at lower suction, so even though it's got an attachment hooked up, you're getting 82 minutes with this attachment. And that's gonna be the same with any of these. You still get an hour in eco mode. The battery life's really good. It dynamically adjusts. And one cool thing is that this model comes with a removable battery. You just press this red button here. So mine only came with one battery, but now you can purchase extra batteries if you want to swap them out. You can drop these right into the charger on their own if you had a second battery while you're vacuuming. And this battery says it's rated at 3,600 milliamp hours. It's a heavy battery that, um, that has a high capacity. And that just snaps back in. So that's easy to swap out too if you need to. Mine just came with the one battery. I could purchase the extra if necessary. I don't think I'll ever need to with these cordless Dysons over the years. My home isn't large enough where I need to swap them out. I'm usually not vacuuming for two hours at a time. I think the one will work just fine. The Dyson comes with an optional wall mount charger. The charger hangs on the wall with two screws. The wall mount stores two tools and the vacuum itself just drops into the charger to recharge it. This is a convenient way to keep the Dyson fully charged and ready to go. If you're going to use this charger, I recommend setting it up near an area where the machine will get used a lot. I have mine in my kitchen. Just the hand vac of the Dyson V15 Detect weighs four and a half pounds. With the heaviest smaller attachment, the hair screw tool, the V15 weighs 5.28 pounds. At its heaviest, with the wand and motor head attached, the V15 weighs 7.16 pounds. Just to note, the new fluffy head is surprisingly lightweight at less than a pound. Both the motor head and fluffy head are 10 inches wide. The actual cleaning path is about nine and a half inches. I measured the noise level with the decibel reader held around handle height. I measured it with the noisiest tool attached, the high torque cleaner head. On eco mode, it read around 75 decibels. On medium or auto mode, it read around 79 decibels. On boost mode, it read around 84 to 86 decibels. The exhaust of the machine being by the decibel reader may have increased these readings. In eco and auto mode, this Dyson is much quieter than their older models. The handle weight read about four pounds. Although well balanced for what it is, it is heavier in the hands than many traditional machines that have the motor at the floor instead of everything being up by your hand. With the motor up at the top, the Dyson is both very low profile and maneuverable. It can easily get under and around furniture. The biggest improvement on the V15 is the three redesigned cleaner heads. This is the new high torque cleaner head with anti-tangle comb. Along the back of the nozzle, there's a comb that the bristles feed through and this cleans hair off the brush bar. Although not perfect, this is a massive improvement. Back in the day, Dyson was one of the worst culprits for brush roll tangles, but now all three cleaner heads self-clean during use. The cleaning performance of the cleaner head on carpeting seems extremely similar to the V11, but the increased dynamic suction improves overall pickup. On the front of the cleaner, there's gates that you can open or close to vent out the suction to help make it easier to push on thicker carpeting. I tend to leave the gates in the center position with them half open. Opening the gates also helps with pickup of larger particles. I find with the gates completely closed in the plus position, it clamps down to the carpeting in my home and is difficult to push. It's very easy to push with the gates open. Here's another cool attachment included with the V15, the new hair screw tool. I've never seen anything quite like this. The brush roll is cone shaped so it tapers. It's only attached at one end and at the open end, hair is spun off the brush bar and into the suction path. Not only does it clean itself off in real time during use, it does an excellent job cleaning. 
This attachment is great for stairs, cleaning pet hair off of furniture, and cleaning out the car. The other brand new tool included with this new Dyson is the Laser Slim Fluffy Cleaner Head. This attachment is made just for cleaning hard floors and it does a fantastic job. With its soft roller, it gobbles up fine particles as well as larger particles with ease. This attachment is much lower profile than the original fluffy head, so unlike that tool, this one can actually get under my cabinets, which is a nice improvement. It's also designed not to tangle up with hair, and we'll test that shortly. The main new feature of this head is the laser. Dyson was never interested in headlights on their vacuums, but this is the closest they've gotten to one so far, and it's very clever. There's a small green laser on one side, and it's angled to project a sheet of light across the floor. The sheet of light casts a shadow on and reveals dust normally invisible to the naked eye. This attachment works great and is more fun to use than expected. Since it exposes invisible dust, it encourages you to be more thorough and get all the dust you didn't realize was there before. All three of the Dyson's cleaner heads are now designed not to tangle up with hair. So that's exactly what we're gonna test. This is about 23 inch hair, it's real long. I'm gonna test this with probably the most hair at once too because it should be able to handle it. All right, so that amount of hair, it kind of got stuck right here because that was such a large quantity. It did work. If you look at the brush roll, there's no hair on it at all. So the only thing is if you throw that much at it, the air path here is kind of narrow and the air path in the vacuum in general is kind of narrow. So it can only handle so much at once. It did completely clean it off. So daily hair, it's gonna handle just fine, which is great. Let's see if I can get this to eject. There we go. <laughs> and it balled it up nicely. This cleaner head has a comb that runs along the back of it. All the brushes are fed through the comb as it spins around, and it's designed to actively clean hair off of the brush roll. I've got three different lengths of hair here, and we're gonna see how it handles it. I've got four inch hair right here. This is about seven inch hair, and this is about 10 inch hair. And let's see how this does. For that first run, clean most of it right off. There's a couple hairs at the very end here. Now let's try the seven inch hair. If I ran it longer, it might've cleaned off the rest of it, but it did leave some hair wrapped around the brush roll here. Not a ton, but there's some, and it does clean out pretty easily, but there's still some wrapped around. I think if I ran it longer, it would help clean the rest of that off, but keep in mind that was a large quantity too. Now let's try it with this 10 inch hair. Uh, you know what, for how much that was, uh, that's pretty good. So uh, the leftover here, there's a little bit wrapped up in the center here. It got it off the ends just fine. So that's actually pretty good. If I did this with my V11 animal, the same test, it would have been completely wrapped up with hair and it would have been a pain to clean. Um, not only does this clean off really easy, the remnants, but it does seem to do a pretty good job actively cleaning the hair off. So that's great. So it looks like too, they finally added a little bit of a, a guard. This is very reminiscent of what SIBO does with their brush rolls and hopefully that will help prevent hair from getting into the little ball bearing that's in the end there. So they've made a lot of improvements on this in terms of uh, how, to, how this will keep itself clean. Now we're gonna try the same thing out with the new Laser Slim Fluffy Head. Here I've got four inch hair, seven inch hair, and 12 inch hair. And this is designed not to tangle up with hair too. I'm very curious to see how this will handle this. I have no idea if this is gonna work or not. gobbled it all right up without any issue at all. Nothing wrapped around it at all, so it's working very well. And let's try it with this longer hair. The longer hair in that amount, it did get wrapped around it. But with um, that was just a really large quantity, and the other stuff it gobbled right up. So I think with everyday hair, it's gonna do just fine. On this red rug here, I've ground in a ton of fake pet hair, and I've put down glitter, shredded paper, and rice. With this Dyson, this new cleaner head, because it's got more suction, it really clamps down to the sealed rubber-backed area rug. So I have to have the gate in the minus position for the test, so I have it uh, fully open, because otherwise the brush roll will just conk out. And let's see how it cleans.
one pass forward and back that didn't and did an amazing job, especially for a cordless stick back. Um, this is definitely the best cleaning cordless stick vacuum I've ever used. I want to try this tool out on this large mess too. So if you're using this for stairs or trying to, you know, thoroughly clean out a car or something like that, let's see how it handles an extreme test like this. So I'm just going to do one strip forward and back. The new um, hair screw tool does a really good job as well. So not as good as the main cleaner head, but pretty close. The Dyson V11 Animal also does a great job on carpeting, but this is the best cleaning stick back on carpeting I've ever used. The only reason it does better than the V11, the brush bar power is about the same, but it has a lot more suction. On hard floors, the new Laser Slim Fluffy Head does a fantastic job. It gobbles up both large and small particles with ease, and the laser does a good job showing you any fine dust remaining on the floor. The tool is highly maneuverable and is even easier to zip around than the older Fluffy Head. Not only is the attachment fun to use, the results you get from it are nearly flawless. Let's see how the new Laser Slim Fluffy Head handles corners and cleaning the baseboards. I put down a bunch of glitter and some of it's up on the baseboard, so I'm not expecting it to clean that, but we'll see how it handles everything. For corners and edge cleaning, uh, the result's amazing. It does a great job. Here's some ways you can use the various included tools. The only attachment here that isn't included with the V15 is this optional extension hose, but I consider it essential for cleaning out the car, and it's great for general dusting. All the included tools can be attached to the end of the wand or to the handbag itself. I'll show you the maintenance on the machine that Dyson recommends, and there's really not too much to it. In fact, um, as far as tools, all I'll need is a coin, or you could use a flathead screwdriver. The vacuum cleaner comes with four suction-only attachments, and all of these can be hand-washed as needed. Just make sure they're 100% dry before you use them again. Let's start with the handbag itself. The handbag has a washable filter on the back, and it just twists and unlocks and pulls out. And even after all those cleaning demos and using it for a couple weeks, this is still really clean. So it seems like the Cyclone pack is more efficient than the, uh, the one in the V11. That's holding up just fine, but you can just wash this in cold water and as one piece, let it dry 100%, give it at least a day unless you put it in front of a fan or something, and then reinstall it and it'll be ready to go. The bin itself, you have to clean this out further, which it'll get dusty on the inside. This is perfectly normal, but you can open this up. And when you do that, this button here is exposed, this little red button, you hit that. 
and then you can remove the bin. This can be wiped out as well, and then you can wipe all this out too. One of my main concerns about this machine, because it's a problem on the V11, and it's a problem on all their current handbags, and they haven't solved it yet, is the cyclones spit out the dust and dirt into the center gray chamber here, and this is where the dust exits for those cyclones. And all those small holes, I wish there was more room for the dust to fall out cleanly every time you empty it. Because what I found on my V11 was dust built up on the inside over time, and I think it's unavoidable. And my worry is now that they're using this format for most of their vacuum cleaners, I think this could be a problem just across the board. What I would do is I would vacuum this out from time to time with another vacuum and wipe this off where these electrical connections are. Since this inside area uh, holds dust as well, it'd be great if they could figure out a way where it would automatically eject that dirt as well, along with the outside dirt, because this works so well, it's a shame that it does hold dust on the inside. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sweep this off. So that's good to go. There's not too much to it. Wash the filters you need to, clean this out, and then vacuum out that center area where the cyclones spit out the dirt, and that'll keep this part running great. If you ever uh, are dealing with an issue, it'll tell you if there's a blockage and where to check, but this is a key area. This dirt path right here, as well as, hopefully you can see that inside the wand. Make sure that that stays nice and clear as well. Now let's take a look at the cleaner heads. And again, there's not too much to it. On this one, you can just unlock this right here. It looks like a twist up to unlock. The old ones are kind of spring loaded here. And then the whole brush roll slides out as one piece. Even new, just from performing all those tests, there's some dust built up on the inside already. And they added a thread guard to the side here to help uh, hair from getting into the end. Let's see how this looks. And there's still some fine dust in here so you can sweep this out and even a little bit of glitter. Perfectly normal, that's just how they are. There's no hair in there and that's good. The big thing is you don't want hair to get into the ends because if it gets into where the bearings are, that can cause issue. And this I'm just gonna vacuum off. The end cap just pushes back on. And you can't wash this because the ball bearing is sitting inside the brush roll. This isn't meant to be washed, but you could wipe this down at this point if needed. That just slides back in. And you know what? That time I didn't even need a coin. I was just able to twist and lock this back into place. There's a flat edge, and that just has to line up, and that's it. So nothing to it. The fluffy head is also easy to clean. You can wipe this out. And to unlock it, you just lift this here. See that? And then the whole brush roll should slide right out. So there's the tiny motor that drives this. It's actually a really energy efficient motor. So you can wipe this out as needed, but if you separate this, I think, yep, the bearing for the fluffy heads in here, it's a tiny, it looks like a tiny sleeve bearing. It's got an itty bitty bearing in there. This you can wash with cold water, and these will get grimy over time. So honestly, the other fluffy head I've washed with soap and water, but you let it dry 100% before you put this all back together. It looks like since that's a sleeve bearing, you could lubricate that post with 3-in-1 motor oil as needed, but otherwise there's not too much to it. So this just presses back on. It lines up back into place, just like so. And I kind of have to feed it in a little bit, and then this just pushes and locks into place. So no tools are required. Really easy to take apart. I really like that. The hair screw tool, this comes apart really easily as well. There's a red latch here that you unlock. You have to unlock it all the way. It kind of separates there. And then it just separates from the motor. And then you can pull this apart. And you can get in here because it looks like they designed this so that just in case hair and thread does get built up in there, you can easily get to it and clean it out. This you could wash as well. So while you can't wash the main brush, well, you can wash this. There's little things on this. Look at how the bristles are angled. It's designed to actively feed off hair and thread. And as I've been doing these tests, this works really well. I'm very impressed with this. So that just clicks back in. This you could also wash as needed. That wouldn't be an issue. This just slides back in. You have to line up the two gray parts. See how that lines up? And then once it's lined up correctly, it'll all lock into place. And that's it. Taking care of the vacuum is really easy. Doing the regular maintenance on this isn't difficult at all. Like I said, you don't even need a screwdriver. You just need a coin to take apart only this head. Everything else unclicks. You know, make sure you check the filter. They recommend monthly, but realistically, you could probably get away with cleaning it every, you know, two to four months, but that would uh, definitely depend on regular use. If this is gonna be your only vacuum, check it monthly. But when the time comes, all this is easy. A good chunk of it's washable, it all comes apart easy. So all of that I like. So there you have it. I would argue that the new Dyson V15 Detect is the best cordless stick vacuum ever made. The performance on carpeting is best in class, and the performance on hard floors is largely unmatched. The machine is easy to use, has a lot of power, and the many included attachments make the machine very versatile. The bin of the V15 is easy to empty when full, and the maintenance on the machine is simple, with no tools required. 
And as far as improvements I would like to see, although it cleans great, I wish the brush bar of the high torque cleaner head had more agitation with longer and stiffer bristles so it could pull itself through carpeting. In auto mode, when the suction kicks up, it can be harder to push than I would like. I also wish Dyson could figure out a way to self-clean the inside of the cyclone assembly as they like to slowly build up with dust, potentially causing issues down the road. It's a shame the cyclone assembly isn't easily removable to clean out as needed. Overall though, I have little issue with the machine. It's the best cleaning cordless stick vac I've ever used. The new cleaner heads all clean great, the battery life is impressive, and the vacuum can clean a room from top to bottom. It's hard to say whether this machine is worth the retail price of $700. It has a lot of great innovative features, but those come at a steep cost. I always enjoy reading your comments. Thank you for watching and have a great day.